Dr. Sheer Hendricks, if you'd stand. She is CMU Vice President for Academic Affairs. And um, with her, Brigetta Sunderman. And she's Western Colorado Community College Vice President of Community College Affairs. So we've got the university represented and WCCC represented. Then, in terms of um, CMU involvement, the CMU Montrose, in the back of the room, Tamara, will you stand? We have um, Tamara Miller-Brown. She's the front desk person doing everything, I think. She's the CMU professional staff assistant. And in charge of CMU Montrose is Steve Matheny. He's the um, director. And then, in terms of community involvement, according to our bylaws charter, or whatever you call those papers, <laughs> we need to have representatives from throughout the community. So I'm going to introduce those people. And what we hope you will see is what a broad section of the community we have that's invested in CMU meeting monthly, uh, brainstorming, dreaming, trying to figure out what the future of CMU looks like here in Montrose and how we can grow that campus. So when I introduce these people, if they would stand, I don't see Keith, but Keith Caddy, um, he's chair of the Montrose County Commissioners, Michelle Haynes from Region 10, Bill Bell, City of Montrose Manager, David is here. David, will you stand? David Frank, he's the mayor um, representing the city of Montrose. David Reed, if you would also stand. David is the former chair of the CMU Board of Trustees in Grand Junction. He also is on city council. Judy Ann Files. Um, Judy Ann was CMU alum and that's why she has a position on this board, but she was also former mayor of Montrose. 
I don't see Ray Lucero. He's our connection with the Colorado Department of Labor and Employment. He's the regional director. And Amanda Waltrip, regional program assistant for Colorado Department of Labor and Employment. Tony is here. Tony um, is director of operations for Ross Reels. And we're trying to get a machining technology class going. And he has been very instrumental in helping us with that. Paul Palladino is also on our board. He's our landlord <laughs> because we rent space from the library for classrooms. Mary Rasmussen, Director of Education in EM with Montrose Regional Health. Tish Saunders, who is not here, Senior Vice President of Home Loan State Bank. And I am the Chair of that committee. So we, as I said, have been meeting monthly and in the past two years have really picked up the pace for what's happening at CMU Montrose. We've been able to accomplish things I never thought we'd accomplish. And I'm not usually a naysayer, but I thought, oh, we'll never do that. And we've done it. Um, and Steve will be covering some of that when he speaks. Our, our intent is to grow the campus. And obviously, we can't do that without students. And the real people involved in that are um, the people from the school district. So it, what we'd like to do today is begin I have to do this. Carrie, did I introduce you? <laughs> I kept thinking, I, Carrie's sitting there. Carrie, would you, Dr. Stevenson, will you stand? Uh, sorry. <laughs> it's really important that we have the school district in <laughs> Carrie is part of our board, and um, without the help, the, support and the help of the school district, obviously, we would not grow this campus. I see Bill Bell just walked in. I introduced you earlier. Uh, City of Montreal on the advisory board. See, you can't sneak in late. You'll get nailed. Um, so, more directly, we want to hear from the school district. And we want to know what's going on in terms of career and technical as there. And then we'll show you how that works into the CMU campus and how we've been able to grow programs like um, nursing, the uh, welding program, machining technology. So we'll start with John Steele, who is Secondary Curriculum and STEM Coordinator for the school district. He's going to team up with Kathy Gaber, who is in the Career and Technical Ed Department at the high school and places students off campus in jobs. Um, and then they're going to hand the mic over to Brigetta, who will talk to us about Western Colorado Community College and how that interfaces with CMU Montrose. And then our last speaker will be Steve Matheny, and he's going to talk about all the great things that are happening on campus. So thank you all for coming. And uh, John, it's all yours. Thank you, Kathy. Well, thank you for coming today and learning a little bit about what we're doing with career technical education and work-based learning in Montrose County School District. I'm John Steele, post-secondary coordinator. Uh, this is my sixth year of the job, and over those six years, I have been working with our CTE teachers and students quite a bit to make sure that those programs continue to be a good learning opportunity for our students and developing our own local workforce here in Montrose and the Region 10 generally. Um, next slide. 
Um, so I just kind of want to like paint the broader picture of how we handle career advisement, development, um, exploration, those kinds of things, because CTE is situated within uh, learning about careers and developing oneself for a career. Um, so we do a process called the ICAP. It's the Individual Career and Academic Plan. It is something that is required uh, by all school districts in Colorado, um, and each school district determines how they conduct that process. Uh, so we have, just up here you can kind of see that at each grade level we have a particular focus for students in that ICAP process. But basically the whole process is about students learning about their interests and aptitudes um, and what careers might be a good fit for them once they graduate from high school and either go on to post-secondary education or enter the workforce directly. Um, so we have um, events that we try to do where kids can learn from real industry professionals um, to explore those career possibilities and we try to do a main event for each grade level every two grade levels. So like in sixth grade, eighth grade, tenth grade, twelfth grade, we try to do a major event with a different focus so kids can go and interact with real professionals. So you can see some of the pictures from that. The financial reality fair happens in the spring and that's mostly just for seniors to learn a little bit about um, having a budget and living in the real world. Um, this was our building trades, our building futures construction trade fair that we did in March of last year. So we had all 10th graders from the whole district go and there were 50 hands-on stations where students could learn how to lay brick, as you can see in this picture, or how to um, you know, wire an outlet or put up a piece of drywall. So there were a bunch of different stations and at each station kids could do something hands-on with a construction trade professional. That was pretty cool. Um, this one's our symposium at the Manufacturing Expo and that um, is coming up this November 3rd. This year it'll be at the Event Center. Uh, but we like to feature all the STEM programs that our secondary students are involved with. So we bring uh, a team from each school and they kind of get to demonstrate the skills that they're learning and then network with our STEM um, professionals in the area so that they can kind of see what career opportunities are available to them here locally. Um, and then we've also got this new platform that we're starting to help with that uh, ICAP process called Major Clarity. And I won't go into it a lot except I just want to say that it's a really cool platform where kids get to explore um, careers in all the 17 career clusters all the way down to a specific occupation level. So if they're interested in being a plumber, they can really explore that career path, um, get to like look, look at some interviews with a real plumber and then do a simulated task that would be related to the plumbing profession and then rate their experiences doing those things. So the more they interact with this platform, the better um, the suggestions it gives to students about what best fit careers might be. So it really helps them hone in on what a good career path for the student might be. Um, so we just started that this year and it's a pretty cool process. When I was in high school, we had a career advisor and he just said, look, I advise you to get a career. And that was about it. Um, but this platform does a lot more than that. It gives kids real specific information uh, so they can make good informed choices. Um, as part of that process, we're really starting this work now to develop career pathways. And I just wanted to kind of briefly talk about a process that we just started uh, with this. And this is our model for how we're going to do it. But basically, we were kind of presented with an interesting dilemma with the new police academy that's starting up here at CMU. Um, that kid or that candidates in that police academy can't really start until they're age 21. So the question was, how do we get kids from 18 years old when they graduate high school to stick around in town until they're 21 and can do police academy? And um, then, of course, become employed with the police department here in Montrose. Um, so we started thinking about that and worked with the police department and Steve Matheny at CMU and kind of worked backwards. Okay, police department, what skills would you want your candidates in the police academy to have coming in? We worked backwards to say, okay, what are the high school courses that uh, would support those skills? And we make the recommended courses that kids should take if they're on this pathway. And we worked with the CMU to figure out, okay, what's that bridge that gets them from 18 to 21? Well, now there's a criminal justice associates program opportunity for kids to take care. So that can kind of keep them um, on the track until they get into the police academy at 21 years old. And so basically we developed this one pager that's going to be available to our students and all stakeholders that kind of outlines the pathway starting in high school, well starting really, I guess in middle school with the ICAP process, but um, by the time they get to high school, here are the recommended courses they should take, here's the extracurricular opportunities that would support this pathway, here's local post-secondary options for education, um, and here's local employment opportunities should they pursue this. And the police academy, or being a police officer, is just one occupation on this left-hand uh, rail that um, fits within this career cluster. Other things might be firefighting, criminal justice, legal services, so on and so forth. So there's a whole range of different occupations that fit within this cluster. Police academy is just one of them. So this document can kind of help guide students on the correct, to be on the correct path. Um, so I just want to talk a little bit about the funding piece, because as you can imagine, with Career Tech Ed, 
for students to have a good learning environment, they have to have the tools of the trade, the industry standard equipment to be able to learn how to use it. So that costs a lot of money. So we have a, a program that's available to all CTE programs in the state or in the country, really, called Carl, Carl Perkins. And it's a federal act that Congress approved in a bipartisan way. It's one of those things that has bipartisan support. Um, so the Fed funds it, states get a pot of money, and then they distribute to school districts in the state. And it's formula-based, which basically just means that we get a set amount of money no matter how many CTE programs we set up in our district. So right now we have 10 programs in our district. If we were to add another five and have 15, our pot of money would not increase. It would just get divided among those programs in smaller chunks, if that makes sense. Um, so there's two pieces to it. We get a grant every year called the Perkins Grant, and that can be used for buying supplies for the classroom. There's also a CTA reimbursement piece. So any money that the school district spends out of its general fund can be re reimbursed to us through this program, um, but we only get about 25% reimbursed back for whatever we spent out of our own pocket. Um, and that helps pay for teacher salaries mostly. Um, there's, you can tell it's a federal program because there's a 200 page admin handbook full of rules and regulations. <laughs> so there's a lot that goes into this, a lot of strings attached to that money. Um, but basically in the region, region 10, we have to do every two years a local needs assessment. So all the school districts that are in this area, region 10, and the post-secondary partners, like it's TCR, um, we get together and figure out what is our um, greatest needs in this area? What does the economic data tell us? Then we set our priorities based on what the local economic needs are in our area, and that binds all the districts in that area to kind of the same goals. So from that, then we develop our school district's four years as CTE strategic plan, and say, okay, in our district, here are our goals, what we wanna focus on. And then each year we do an annual spending plan. So how we're gonna spend the money, has to be tied to the goals in our district as well as the regional goals. Um, this year we're getting $66,202 for our Perkins grant, and that will be split among 10 programs in the district, three at Olathe and seven at Montrose High School. This is a really essential funding, if you wouldn't mind playing that video, Kathy. Uh, this is essential funding to buy the equipment that students need to get that hands-on learning experience. So like you can see right here, this Perkins money bought a lot of the equipment you see in our ag program at Montrose High School for welding, for example. So it's things like that that our um, students need to learn that the Perkins money helps us buy. Next slide. So just briefly, like how some of this works, um, it's kind of a complex system, but basically CTE uses the career cluster model. So it basically organizes all the different possible careers and occupations within six broad categories and then our programs have to be developed within those six categories, um, which is kind of a nice way to organize it so that we can kind of make sure that we're delivering uh, the right skills to students based on whatever the industry is. Uh, so teachers have to be credentialed. So that's an important thing to know, that um, you know, most teachers in, our, in, in education just have to have a teaching license in their content area, right? Our CT teacher, CTE teachers have to have that as well as a CTE credential. And what that basically means is that they've not only got a teaching license, but they also have to be able to prove that they have a certain number of years occupational experience in whatever it is they're teaching. So if they're in the auto program, they have to be able to show that they've got at least four years of occupational experience being an auto mechanic, because they have to bring that occupational experience to the teaching as well. Um, so uh, they get an initial three-year license and they have to do some coursework. After they complete that coursework, then they get a five-year professional license. Um, so it is like a little bit extra that our teachers for CTE have to do as well as they have a little bit more responsibility than a normal classroom teacher in data collection reporting. Um, so one of the requirements of that federal program is that we track our students. So if a kid shows up in my CTE class one year, then I have to follow up with that student six months later to find out what are they doing? Are they continuing education? Did they enter the workforce? If they did enter the workforce, is it a job that's related to the CTE program that I taught? Uh, did they go on to college? And if they did go on to college, is it in a training program based on the, or is it, this, is it aligned with the program that they were in that I was teaching that student? Uh, so like, did they go into a business program at a college? If I taught business, I wanna know that so that my kids are following the pathway. Um, we have to have program approvals as well. So basically a program approval is a big document that says, here's what we're gonna do. Here are the courses we're gonna teach. Here is the advisory committee members because every CTE program has to have an advisory committee made up of professionals from the industry. Uh, to kind of give some guidance to that program. Uh, they have to have two advisory meetings per year. Uh, they have to have a student organization. So like for ag, it's FFA. So the FFA students go to conferences and competitions and that's how we develop student leadership skills. Um, we have, they also have to have work-based learning opportunities. That's a new requirement. 
So in a CTE program, it has to end, uh, the course progression has to end with a work-based learning opportunity, which might be an apprenticeship or uh, internship or some other form of learning about work at work. Um, and then we have to renew and review those program approvals every four years, and it's always in informed by labor market data. So we make sure that we're staying up to date. And I'm gonna hand it over to Kathy to talk about what programs we do have. So with all that background, um, I'm just gonna talk to you a little bit about what's actually in the schools um, for the Montrose County School District. And I am the work-based learning coordinator at Montrose High School. Um, I, there are people at all of our high schools in the district that actually coordinate those work-based learning opportunities. And I do at Montrose High School. But I'm gonna talk to you about all the programs we have. So this is um, at Olathe High School. So one of the CTE programs they have is the agricultural program. I was actually a part of that when I graduated from Olathe High School. And it looks completely different than it did, I don't want to say how many years ago, <laughs> but it has, it's, it's really grown. So you think of agriculture, it's not just agriculture <coughs> classes anymore. They're not just studying crops. They are learning about agribusiness. They're learning about animal science. There's so many different courses that you can take. And we've kind of listed some of those courses out here, including um, construction management. So that also brings us to another I should probably be running this instead of me. Okay. Oh, gotcha. Because um, I clicked it and then you clicked it. So we both. We both <laughs> there you go. Yes. Okay. So um, one of the other programs they have is the business program. And again, you can see the range of courses here. Everything from personal finance all the way up to graphic design and entrepreneurship. And then they also have um, the construction trade program. And the construction program, again, I've listed the classes here. But everything from woodworking to metalworking to architecture, all the way up to, again, learning about construction management. So both the ag agricultural program and the construction program are teaching um, construction trades. At Montrose High School, we also have a business course. Here's the list of business courses as well. You can see that they understand a little bit about technology, but then they grow from those technology classes into the management classes, all the way up into accounting, again, economics, entrepreneurship, all types of courses that they have here. And with each of the courses that we offer, there's four-year pathways. So you start as a freshman, and there are classes that you take all the way through your senior year to prepare you for what's to come after high school. Um, we have the agricultural program at Montrose High School as well. You can see the list of courses that are there. Our veterinary science programs that are within the agricultural program at Montrose High School are very, very strong. Quite a few of those students go on to study a work-based learning opportunity and do internships with our local vets here at the school. So that's kind of been a really exciting opportunity to grow that program. Um, in the multimedia program, um, we have graphic design, Photoshop, Illustrator, web design, so all kinds of opportunities for them to really work with the multimedia. You'll also notice that uh, you can now live stream all of our experiences, opportunities, games, events that happen at Montrose High School. So those are another way to just um, kind of see how the students are putting those multimedia skills to use. We have our hospitality program, which really is made up of understanding um, food management, so they start off in food science and they work their way all the way up until catering and they're catering quite a few events in our, in our community right now. So that's exciting as well. Um, in the engineering program, again, it is a four-year pathway. We partner with UCCS in order to like build that curriculum. It's uh, called Project Lead the Way and we have three Project Lead the Way programs at Monson High School and our engineering one also happens to be CTE. Um, our automotive program, also four-year pathway. Students start their freshman year. They really get into working on cars that sophomore year. By the time that they graduate, they graduate with certification and skills where they can actually go to work in our local shops. Our construction trade program at Montrose High School um, starts off with woodworking, and that is the one that we're really concentrating on growing that pathway. Um, we've been kind of splitting the teacher between the engineering program and the woods program, and as you can see with two four-way two four-year pathways, it's very difficult with that FTE to split that. So this is one of the one of the areas that we plan on growing at Montrose High School. So every single one of the CTE programs leads you to a work-based learning opportunity. So after you spent a couple of years within that pathway, 
we want to make sure that you really know what that career is like before you graduate from Montrose High School and go spend some money on post-secondary post opportunities. We, we don't want you to waste that time and money. We want to make sure that it's a good fit. So we try to place all of our students that have been in those pathways or other students that are interested into work-based learning opportunities. There's quite a list of ways that they can get involved with those work-based learning opportunities. And there are some handouts back there if you want to take one of these with you. One of the most popular, I would say, is the internship and the apprenticeships. So with the internships, those are kids that are under 18, and they happen their, their junior and their senior year. And we place about 150 kids a year in those internships. Everything from, I see Mary over there, she places quite a few of our students at the hospital. We have a project lead the way by a medical program, and all of those students um, want to, again, have the opportunity to have that hands-on observation. And so they get to go into those medical industries and learn that before they actually go decide to do that career. We also place quite a few, I see Tony back there, he's always taken one of our students. So all around the community and all kinds of positions, I'm just excited to do that. And then we also, a couple years ago, started a Certified for Success program. And so what that means is that basically students have the opportunity to get industry certified before they leave high school. So they're walking away with a professional certification that will allow them to go right to work. Um, a couple of, couple of stories I'll tell you. One of my students that um, was certified last year, he um, is in college this year, and when he applied for college and went and talked to his academic advisor, he was able to exempt out of three of his underclass programs. So that's three classes he didn't have to take and pay for because he already had the certification in Autodesk. I had another student who um, applied for an internship. We run internships over the summer as well. And he applied for a summer internship, and when his employer found out that he also had industry certification, he said, well, not only will I take you on as an intern, but I will pay you, since you have the certification. So that gave him an opportunity to go right to work as well, um, while he was still in high school. The goal is that all of our students, when they graduate from Montrose High School, will be ready for whatever comes. And we're working really hard to grow our own employment base. So the programs that we develop here at Montrose High School within the CTE program are all about how can we get these kids to work so that when they graduate from Montrose High School, they're prepared, they have the skills, they have the knowledge, and they have the connections to go right to work in our own community. So if you can look through this continuum right here, we start with, um, we start with our students being in classes in the CTE pathways for them to just learn about work and explore work. And that builds all the way up here to learning at work. And that's why we have the work-based learning program, is so that they can actually go to work, be in the profession their senior year, and see what that's exactly like and make those connections. So this is the continuum that's put out by the state, the state and kind of the expectation for us to kind of grow our students and be, be prepared when they graduate. Um, John already kind of noted, he, he made note of all of the career events that we go to. So we plan and organize these so that students have an idea of all the different types of careers that are out there, especially the ones that are in this community that are going to be employing them. And so you can see like one of the events that's happening here is one of the career fairs. But real specifically, I just want to draw attention to the career fairs that we have at our school and in our community, they, they really are about the vocation. So a lot of you guys are familiar with that word, the vocational programming, which is now called career technical. So that's kind of been the change. But many of the people that we invite to these careers to talk to our students about their careers, those are all local jobs. And the hope is that those students will see what local jobs are available to them so that they can start thinking about all of their options for careers. All right. Uh, one last thing from the school district side of things that I want to share with you is a new grant we just received uh, in June, and we're pretty excited about this one because it's going to allow us to expand some CTE uh, career pathways. Uh, it's called the Rural Coaction Grant, and it's pretty interesting that it uh, partnered us up with Delta County School District, Ridgeway, and Gunnison School Districts uh, to kind of figure out what common needs we have for career pathways. And we worked together for quite a while, probably since January we've been working together, uh, to figure out where we wanted to focus when we wanted to apply for this grant. We actually got the grant for 1.3 million, um, and that will help us to develop uh, these three priority career pathways we've identified. So medical, construction trades, and outdoor rec and tourism. 
So, um, so most of these, as you could, you know, from the presentation you just saw, we already have some of these pathways, but they need to be expanded, especially the construction trades. And with our new outer range school uh, that focuses on outdoor education, this will help um, kind of expand what opportunities we can offer kids through that program. So uh, it creates a collaborative structure, the grant does, for us to share resources among these four districts and with our post-secondary partners. So CMU is one, Technical College of the Rockies, and Colorado University in Gunnison. They're also supporting this work uh, to help us provide that pathway into the after high school, college training, whatever it may be. It doesn't have to be a four-year degree. It could be a certificate program, right? Uh, it could just be that they um, do an associate's degree. It doesn't have to be a four-year bachelor's degree. But we do have that opportunity with our second post-secondary partners to provide the training after high school to prepare them for these careers. Um, we are currently taking some applications for a grant-funded program manager that will help facilitate the work among all of those organizations that are working together. So this is a pretty cool opportunity that we're really excited about. So I'm going to hand the microphone over to Brigetta now. Good morning. Um, wow, Montrose School District hit it out of the park. It's amazing what you guys are doing. Um, and I, it just, it's fall in Montrose, and I wasn't quite ready for that when I drove down here this morning. <laughs> um, so, I'm not sure everybody always knows this. We talk about WCCC, we talk about CMU. We are one and the same. So if someone comes to do career tech ed at WCCC, they still walk out with the CMU transcript. That was really just a branding, uh, a branding technique so that people in our community would know that there's a career tech ed part, okay? I don't think everybody knows that. And we do this, you know, for 16 year olds to 60 year olds and up. Um, so this last May 28th, I think, we did a Learn for Less initiative when now all the other prices were going up and the grocery stores and the pumps, we brought our prices down 40%. So instead of $10,000 for the year, it's gonna cost 6,000. Really fun. I'm just hoping that we don't have to like lock the doors at some point. Um, the program that we have here in Montrose is the Police Academy. That was, did anybody get to go to that event? I know, yeah. Um, so there was six cadets, it's the inaugural graduation, and I would guess there was about 200 people. It was, it was crazy, it was cool. Um, we have Wally Manufacturing Technology, Nurse Aid, um, these other few programs that we have here, but we have a bunch to choose from. So these are the programs that we have um, in Grand Junction that we do right now. So, and what generally happens is someone says, you need to come in my office, you have to have horse training school, right? So what does that cost? Are you gonna pay the individual more if they go to school than if they don't? If, there's, if it's a no, we're not gonna do the program because there's no need. Um, but here are some of the programs that we do. Really cool part of what we, we just found out, I think two weeks ago, is the Senate Bill 226. It's called Care Forward, and we're just talking healthcare system really struggling, right? They're, they're not getting employees. So WCCC was designated for 1.38 million, which is allowing six programs, and we're trying to do it off the top of my head. There's EMTs, paramedics, nurse aid, gerontology, pharmacy tech, medical assistant, I think that's six and uh, CNA, um, and then a couple of phlebotomy classes are gonna be free, free tuition. So tell everybody you know, if you wanna get into healthcare, do it now. That'll be available for at least a couple of years. Um, and it's last dollars in, so you have to apply for state and federal grants, and then we'll backfill that. We just started backfilling students' accounts this week for the fall. Um, another piece, does anybody know anybody in foster care or was in foster care? Yeah. So there's also a foster youth scholarship. 
if an individual was in foster care, this is not in the presentation, but it's so cool, I have to tell you guys. If they were in foster care before the age of 13, it doesn't matter how old they are now, they'll get tuition, living expenses, food expenses, and supplies. And any program. So it can be WCCC, it can be four year, and it can be throughout the state. I call my foster son the next day. He's on Eastern Slope, he's gonna go back to school. So tell everybody you know. It's hard to find these young people. Um, so the partnership we have with Montrose is great. I wanna show you some of the stuff that we're also doing up in Junction, just to, sometimes you don't think about it until you see it. So we had about 80 summer camps this last year. Um, it says 428, that's an old slide actually. So we had about 800 students coming through. They usually do three to four summer camps. Um, the school district up there paid for it last year. We paid for some of it this year. But it gets them excited. This is through middle school through high school. It gets them excited. Montrose is already doing a great job. But it gets them excited early right, which is when you need to do it. Um, the partnership we have with the district up there is long standing. And so the first few years we did some career in tech ed that would allow them to experience it. But it was just, you're getting high school elective classes and credits. And then the last few years we really upped the, really upped the game. So we said, let's get you as many college credits as possible so it's free to the student before they leave. We've got them, I think, 273 certificates. So they got college certificates before they left high school. Um, industry credentials, that's been a nice program. We get some money back from the state. And, and PTEC, so we started that a few years ago. We started with one program, I think we're at about 12. And that allows students to get their associate's degree for free through the college and the high school both. And so our concurrent numbers, this, this top slide is really tech scholars, which is CTE, which is where my brain is at most of the time. But you can see our estimate, we had a bump like everybody did during COVID, um, but those high school students should leave with about 6,000 credit hours this academic year which is over the top. We've had, I think our highest was 4,700 before that. And then we do all concurrent, which is, that's career and tech ed, and that's also when the student goes um, to get an English class or a behavioral science class. Um, hopefully we're, we're gonna hit about 9,000 this year. And the growth has been I think it's partly because we've been adding programs every year. We've added probably two programs on average per year that has allowed us to grow um, with certificates and degrees as well. You can see those certificates really started going up because the high school kids were getting college certificates while they're in school. And then we have community education. We've been doing some of that in Montrose, but I'd really like to grow that and it is really, whatever you want. Maybe John does film on the side, and we say, John, you want to teach a class? Maybe somebody else has bees, and they want to do a class in bees. It can come to us that way. It can also come four or five or six of you say, we want to do beekeeping. Can you find us someone to teach it? And I'm, I'm saying beekeeping because it, it went gangbusters for about four years, and everybody kept coming, and now it slowed down. Um, but we can change based on what we wanted. Um, Tony was here a little bit ago, so we do a bunch of customized business classes, uh, leadership, uh, sexual harassment, lean manufacturing, but we also do them at your facility. So we're doing something with uh, innovative textiles right now, and they wanted a class on supervision. They want it at their location. It's all non-credit, you don't have to apply to school. Just swipe that handy dandy, handy dandy little credit card, right? And, um, and then we just go to their facility, they do it during their lunch hour, employees are happy, employers happy, 
and it's a really good retention technique. I was trying to go fast because I was making sure that we all have time to talk, but is there is there any questions that people have before well, I hand this over to Steve? How about if we do that at the end? And you can no. come, come back up. Steve? Sorry. Um, <coughs> save the best for last? Is that absolutely the best for last? Okay. So what I tried to do was to generate some um, anxiety there so that you can see exactly what we're doing on campus. Um, but what I want to try to do is to kind of wrap up the conversation with what we're doing on the CMU side. So we're very fortunate to have both vice presidents down here at the Montrose campus today, so make sure if you have any follow-up questions that you visit with them. Forgetta being the vice president of WCCC and Dr. Hendricks share as the vice president of CNU. Um, so it doesn't get any higher in leadership chain than that other than the trustees and the, and the president. So if there's things that this community wants to see, this is the leadership team that can really make that happen. So um, what I put together was just kind of a, a quick presentation, um, primarily to embarrass a few people. Um, but really what makes this campus tick down here is it was started with people. And the people of this community, just like Forgetta says, we have a, we start a police academy and 200 people come to celebrate the success of that. We have a forum here every Wednesday and 75 people come to see what's going on in the community. Montrose is different than a lot of other communities. We roll up our sleeves and get things done. And that's how we have this university here. Um, so back in the day, um, I'm going to embarrass a few people here, but um, this was 2012 when we did the, the groundbreaking and the ribbon cutting of the Buell Higher Education Center. That was just 10 years ago. So look where we've come today. Um, so that's how our, our downtown campus became a reality. Um, and there was a lot of conversation before that as to where we wanted to land and where we wanted to be up on the Sunset Mesa and all these things. Um, but there's a cast of characters that were here when that took place, okay? Many are still making it happen. So, uh, J. David Reed was in that picture with part of the cutting. I know David's here somewhere, unless he had to sneak out. Um, Jim Branscombe, uh, he was the one that made a generous donation. Jim and Sharon Branscombe, we have the, the Branscombe Center now, right? That was after, after them and they're still involved. Brigetta, that's Brigetta right there behind Jim Branscombe, and right next to um, Brigetta is Bill Bell. Now Bill's been here this whole entire time, he's seen this vision through as well, is how do we have a downtown, downtown campus that can do all the things that we wanna to try to do? And then Judy Ann Files, I think she might have been the mayor then, I don't remember. Uh, mayor Pro Tem. Mayor Pro that year. Thomas Schmitz was there. So, so yeah, there, a lot of people are still involved in this to try to make sure that we continue to have uh, an educational opportunity here um, for us. The vision remains the same, and this is still what we're trying to accomplish here. Um, provide quality technical and higher ed opportunities right here at Montrose. Both, we want to do career and technical ed, but we also want to do the academic programs. But they're specific to whatever it is that the, that the community wants. 
And that's how we do that through our uh, advisory council with uh, Kathy Evers as the chair. <coughs> so if anybody in the community has an idea or a thought, um, we have ways to get those programs implemented. And for Etta, just like she mentioned, there's a lot of programs in Grand Junction at WCCC. We can stand up any of those programs down here. The only thing we have to have is what? Students. students. We have to have enough students to make that happen. So oftentimes people say, oh, I want to start this program. Great, if we can get the students, let's make it happen. So that, that circles us back to what John and Kathy did was let's develop those pathways early in the middle schools and high schools all the way through so that we can catch them on the tail end to have a local opportunity for them to do that. Not that they couldn't drive to Grand Junction, but if we can do it local, we just do it soon do it. So the idea is that we can grow our own. Um, uh, Police Chief Blaine Hall said it best, it's just impossible for us to recruit police officers when they go to an academy in another location because the, the pay is so much higher in Jefferson <coughs> County and Douglas County and all of those other places. So once they get out of the, the academy, they end up being migrated or um, recruited somewhere else. If we can grow our own right here in Montrose, people that already live here, then we'll have a better chance of keeping people here to, to employ them. So that's really what we're trying to do, machinists, educators, nurses, law enforcement professionals, and the like. Um, so I just put some pictures here, um, trying to get more in student involvement. One of the things that we're really working on here now is to try to make our campus a little more collegiate. You know, it's been more just academic, um, structure so people that were a commuter campus by and large and so people come to campus they go to class and then they go back home or they go back to work or whatever and what we're really missing for those of you that have been in the service or the college or whatever is part of that at least 50 percent in my estimation is the collegiate environment the social environment getting to know other people and participating in those kinds of events that uh, you know you're with fellow students and that kind of thing. So we're really working hard um, with the city of Montrose and the county of Montrose to come up with more ideas and thoughts on how we can be more collegiate. Um, so this is just how some of the things that we've done, um, and these are just some pictures of, of things that we have out there. Um, in addition, one of the things that we always want to clarify, um, and forget us started off with that, and I just want to touch base on that, um, we're a dual purpose university. In other words, Colorado Mesa University has two missions. One is the academic side, a degree awarding institution, both baccalaureate degrees and graduate degrees, but we also have a mission for career technical education, and that's where WCCC comes in. So we're very unique in that way. Um, I used to say we're the only university in Colorado, but forget it tells me there's one other that, that does that, so I just have to say we're unique now, we're not the only one. But to me, that's a huge thing for us. One of the big things that's happening in, in, um, in the world today and the school district is already on top of it, is the idea of stackable credentials. And so that lends it to, for us, for example, what if you put together a welding program that allowed somebody to be certified in AWS welding, but they also had a QuickBooks class, you know, so that they would learn how to actually manage the books when they get out and that kind of thing. So we have the ability right here on campus to do those things. We don't have to send them somewhere else to do that. Um, so in addition, um, what did we do this summer? Uh, Kathy mentioned that there's a lot of really cool things that have happened. Um, for me personally, right place, right time, right? There were a lot of things going on before I kind of came in here. And then after we got through the pandemic and you know, got over the pandemic, um, I guess we're not really over it, depending, depending on the healthcare people say we're not really over it. But in terms of education, we don't, we don't have that problem anymore. Um, a lot of things have happened. So, what did we do? Western Colorado Law Enforcement Academy was so cool having all these, these cadets graduate. Every one of them were placed um, in a regional uh, entity, whether it's city, city PD, Sheriff's Office, or Gunnison uh, Police Department. Every single one of them were placed and sworn in to their respective agencies. So now we're advertising again for next summer. So we'll have another police academy starting in the summer. It's a summer only academy. Um, WCCC in Grand Junction has a, a, the, an academy that goes outside of that, so that the fall and spring semester, as does TCR, this is a summer only academy, but it's pretty exciting. Um, so with that, though, new this fall, 
the programs that we have that we have is, and John touched on this a little bit, is that we packaged a, an associate's degree in criminal justice. And working with the city of Montrose, we're working on a program so that this, while the students are aging, let's say from 18 when they graduate, they can enroll into associate's program here on this campus and also be an intern of sorts at the city of Montrose doing real life work much like what the career options seminar does in the, in the workplace for that. Once they get to be 21, then they can enter the police academy, which this is what this room is right now, is the police academy in the summer, um, and they can get their associate's degree, and then they go in the police academy. We also are standing up, this is the first semester right here in this very room. Um, this is where the LPN program is. We now have the practical nursing program here. Many people don't know here at Colorado Mason University in Montrose, we have both, the, we have the CNA program, we have the LPN program, we have the AES program, and we have the BSN program. We have every nursing program that you have anywhere in the world right here in Montrose. So the students don't have to leave in any, any of the, they don't have to go to any other school and they can get all those nursing programs here. We're the only campus, they don't have the associate's degree, the AES program in Grand Junction, so we're kind of unique in that way. We actually have that four programs. So, um, we also switched and did our um, early childhood education as a hybrid, so we've now incorporated that as a huge need in our area. As we all know, you hear people talk about the child care desert and all that. So we've converted that program into a hybrid of sorts, um, so that we actually have students now from Delta County, you can be in Uray County, and other than that, we partnered with TCR so that if there's somebody from Delta County, they can actually go to TCR and take the class. And it's streamed right here from, from Montrose. So that increased the enrollment a lot. So I think we have like 13 students in that class now, and we had four last semester. So that's been kind of a neat thing that we did this fall. Um, we rekindled the manufacturing technology, and we got a lot of synergies from both um, TEI rock drills, and I see bills here. Um, one of the things that TEI rock drills did was they were replacing a piece of equipment and they donated their old one, which is brand new to us, but something that we could use and it's now in our machine lab. And so now students can actually use real life factory equipment rather than just manual machining kinds of things. So um, that those kinds of community partnerships really make a difference in how we move forward. Um, and then we've also partnered with uh, Ross and Abel Reels, we actually have an internship program where we started a program where if you're an employee at Ross Reels or Abel Reels, um, let's say you're a forklift operator and you have kind of a desire to go into production, then you can come down here and get your machining certificate and they'll repurpose you in, the, in Ross Reels as a machinist uh, for higher pay and that kind of thing. So we have like three students in that program uh, today. Um, in addition, we, for student services, we just recently completed the 24-hour study uh, center. So we now have the ability for students to come here. How many have been students and actually studied at two in the morning? You know, it, it's not eight to five, right? I mean, you procrastinate, and so you actually have to get your paper done in the middle of the night oftentimes. And what was happening before was our students would literally drive down here, sit in their car, and catch the Wi-Fi on their laptops to try to get their work done. And so we now have um, a 24-hour study center where the student can scan in with their map card and go right into the, a safe place to do their work on the computer labs, including all of our career technical ed students from the high school, because they all have the, the map cards as well. So that's been kind of a nice thing. And on-campus student housing. So for the first time in partnership with, and it was really uh, Bill's, idea with a lot of folks with the, at the city of Montrose. But as we grow the downtown campus, the way we call it, whether it's the civic campus for the city, the academic campus for the university, or the county campus, we're all kind of one downtown campus. As we do that, how can we make sure that we're successful? So every time that there's been a, a property that's available in the campus environment, how can we best put that to use? And so one day, Kathy Heavers called and said, by the way, this house is for sale. I think by within one or two days, I don't remember how long it took Bill and the city council to act on that. But very quickly, we were able to form a quick partnership with CMU, and so the city of Montrose and CMU acquired that property, 
and we've since renovated that, and we actually have students living on campus. So this summer, we actually had a, a, one of the police cadets live there, along with some of the interns, I think, from the city of Montrose and maybe one from the BLM that couldn't find housing. Um, and this fall, we actually have three students in there. Um, and so that changes the whole dynamic of the local university when we're no longer just a commuter campus, um, particularly with the nursing programs that we have here in the police academy. We're na now able to recruit students perhaps from longer distances, no longer just being regional. So that's a big thing for us. So here's some pictures um, of my laser pointer is not working on that, but this is a picture of Elise. She's our first student that was moving in. Um, she also is a CNA, so she works all night and goes to school all day, and I don't know how she does all that, but um, she's also the resident assistant. So working with the city of Montrose, um, she's the one that kind of coordinates the different students and the, all the activities that they have there. So special thanks to the city of Montrose for making that happen so quick. Um, that was really a, a really cool thing. So here's a picture of the inside the apartment or dorm rooms. Um, so you just kind of get a, an idea of, of what that looks like. But it's a, it's a really great space um, for the students to be able to, to do their work. In addition, we actually have food services now. Um, with you have, when you have dorm services, you actually have to have food services as well. So in partnership with Montrose Regional Health, and if you haven't eaten at the hospital, of course you should because it's one of the best restaurants in Montrose, but um, we partner with Montrose Regional Health so that the students that live on campus can just go down to the hospital and swipe their card just like they would be in the main campus so they would have food services. Um, so that's been a really nice you know, addition for us. So as we expand that, um, I think that's gonna be a really great uh, thing for all of us. So what's next, just real quick, we're doing some regional surveys, much like what the school district's talking about, is what, what do we need to have locally? Um, we all have these emotional things about what we should have, but statistically, what do we need? So we've got four different surveys that we're putting together through our through CMU's institutional research to try to get some metrics and some, some data on that. Also, the pathway mapping that John and Kathy talked about, super important to what we're doing in the future. And then, this is the, a project that's happening uh, pretty soon. Um, let me kind of get you oriented. If you're going up Townsend and you take a right right here on South 3rd, we're actually going to close that street right there and co complete the, the quad, as we call it, that ties the two campuses together, this building is along with the main campus. And then we'll improve the parking right here by taking this old building down. Um, there's nobody here that works at the painting place, right? They don't know that. Uh, but this building is going to come down so that we'll have much more uh, parking uh, for that. So that's going to be a real nice improvement that, that takes place this year. And then um, if we're successful, depending on how the economy goes and all those things, we're also going to try to expand the quad going towards South 2nd next year, if that makes it through um, all the appro appropriate approvals and that kind of thing. So. Um, a lot of things happening on campus to make that happen. <clears throat> but my message is to tell a friend, you know, my whole thing is on this campus is I'm surprised at the number of people that don't know we actually have both the trade school, career and technical ed, and the university here. So it's up to us as a community to keep telling that story. So tell a friend so that we, everybody will know that, <clears throat> okay? I also say this, and it makes uh, our student services people really nervous. Um, when I say that, but truly, it is free to go to this school if you're a graduate of the Montrose School District, um, it's one of the schools there, Montrose High School, Olathe High School, any of the local schools, in partnership again with the city of Montrose um, through their um, Montrose Success Fund, all they have to do is apply for college and go through their formal, um, how much you know your expected payment should be, and whatever the government doesn't pay through the through your FAFSA, as it's called, the Montrose Success Fund will actually match that. So for most students, it's free to go to this college if you're a graduate of Montrose High School or Olathe High School, so or you know or Vista. So if, at the end of the day, that's something that the city is very vested in to say, we really need our local students to have opportunities here locally uh, to do that. So. I kind of was critical a little bit of the um, our marketing department because they came up with this really cool 
sign that says it pays to stay. Well, we had a poster down there at the Montrose football uh, games. It pays to stay, you know, that just kind of, that's kind of over, it goes here. I told him I really need a, a poster that I can put on the fence down there that says free college. Because that's a different way of saying the same thing. 